you hear them, you listen to them. If you're a listener of this podcast, I'm grateful. And you're listening to me talk about what I know, what I want to talk about and interviewing people again in the innovative space. But what if you want to talk yourself? What if you want to get out there and get your message out there, what you're working on, what you're thinking about? How do you do it? What are the steps? Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can grab and use to set goals, create, and unlock your potential for changing yourself and the world. And now let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Over the next few weeks, you're going to see something a little different on Mondays or hear something a little different on Mondays. When you come to listen to this show, it's going to be a little bit different. Usually on Mondays, I interview a guest. From now until roughly the end of the year, instead, I'm going to do one Monday, an interview with an innovator in the creative, social impact, conservation, or vegan space. Or I'm going to do a kind of a long-term project, and I'm going to talk about podcasts in general. And what do I mean by that? A lot of people are starting podcasts, and I'm going to talk some about that. But a lot of people, before they even begin, want to be guests on podcasts, but how do you do it? How do you pitch yourself and what you're doing, your message, your vision, your mission to a podcast so that you can get on and get interviewed, right? We've seen lots and lots of new shows and there have been lots of people doing articles and blogs and they get interviewed that way. Podcasting, there are tons of podcasts. There are over 2 million easily now. And that's awesome. But you hear them, you listen to them. If you're a listener of this podcast, I'm grateful. And you're listening to me talk about what I know, what I want to talk about and interviewing people again in the innovative space. And that's fabulous. But what if you want to talk yourself? What if you want to get out there and get your message out there, what you're working on, what you're thinking about? How do you do it? What are the steps? So I'm going to talk about because writing's on my brain because my book Die by the Sword just came out. And I'm talking a lot about writing and writers, fiction and nonfiction, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to talk about how to pitch yourself. Let's say you're an author or a writer and you want to pitch yourself to podcasts. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be breaking this down into significant chunks so that you can learn how to pitch yourself onto podcasts through the lens of being a writer, whether nonfiction or fiction, that part doesn't matter, but through that lens, so that through that perspective, is it relatable and applicable to other things that you might be doing if you're not a writer? Absolutely. If you're an actor, same kind of principles will apply. If you're an architect, if you're a lawyer, if you're an accountant, the same kinds of principles will apply for you to pitch yourself to a show as if you're a writer. But this is a way, this is sort of a focusing point for me again, because Die by the Sword just came out. Uh, it's a way for me to focus exactly what you can do to pitch yourself successfully to podcasts. And some of this will be, what are podcast hosts looking for? What are the ways to pitch yourself so that you give yourself an edge so that more podcast hosts will be interested in having you on their show? And this show is brought to you by a couple of different things. First of all, Brain FM, my favorite, favorite, favorite app for meditation and for sharpening my brain and for staying on focus. I use it every single day. And uh, it, as part of my, actually as part of my a super fun creativity project that I've been doing since December 1st of last year, it's almost over. I've been creating a digital art piece every single day. What I do is I listen to the Brain FM app to meditate 15 minutes in the morning. And then out of that meditation comes inspiration to create some sort of artistic piece. And if you want to see that, actually, you can find it at isoltat.com slash 
artist hyphen year. And you can see all 300 plus art pieces that I've done. You can see at the beginning <laughs> where it's very uh, not so good. And then you can go on and you can see the evolution of me as an artist and me as a creative, but also how it's made me innovate everything about my life. So it's really cool. But but the point is that I use the Brain FM app to do that. All right. So without further ado, let me get into how to pitch yourself for podcasts. Part one. Hi again, my name is Isolde Trachtenberg. And I'm going to talk to you about how to use podcasts to promote your writing and or other things that you're doing, because several of you have said things like, well, I don't have anything specific to promote right now. I'm not sure what I would need to do as far as being on a podcast. So I want to talk to you a little bit about why. Why would anybody want to be on a podcast? So I think we can all agree that we want more readers and a bigger audience for our writing or whatever passion project we have. And that's a lot of what this is about, is podcasts are kind of like the interview shows, radio interview and TV interview shows of the 70s, 80s, they allow audiences to get access to people who are doing really cool things and who want to promote those things. So The Tonight Show is actually kind of like a podcast, right? They have celebrities come on and talk about their latest movie or their latest album. And that's what a podcast is in a way. It's an interview, if it's that kind of format, where someone who has something really cool to talk about that is relevant to the podcaster's show comes on and gets to talk about it. So it's a way of getting more audience, more readers. And podcasts have ballooned over the last, especially over during the pandemic, they ballooned. They went completely berserk. When the pandemic started, we had about 700,000 active podcasts. And over 2020 and into 2021, we now have 2.7 million, right? So it's amazing how many podcasts are active, how many people are out there doing their own thing, but also providing a platform for authors, musicians, marketers, attorneys, anything you want to to have uh, access to their audience. So there are hundreds and hundreds of literary and writing podcasts out there. And there are fiction, true crime, nonfiction podcasts are a huge growing trend. So there are lots of different ways that you can access podcasts as a, as a guest, as someone who can go on and talk about the things that you that you are interested in or that you are writing about. And one of the other things to look at it is that it is new. Podcasting as an art form started in around 2004. But many people didn't know about it. And there were there was anybody here ever hear of Scott Siegler? Just you can just put a thing in the chat if you have. He is an author who started writing these books about diseases and the kind of thriller suspense books. And he 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 made a podcast and he read his book on the podcast and he got a huge audience just by reading his book just on a podcast. And people at the end, he didn't charge for it, but at the end, people just said, you know what, I want to pay you for this. And so he made all sorts of money and then Random House came calling and now he's a signed author with Random House because he decided to do this. So it's an innovative way to get your work out there and it benefits three groups, right? It benefits you as the as the author or as the guest. It benefits the host because they get someone who has expertise in something that is interesting to them. And more importantly to the host, really, it benefits the host's audience because they get access to someone like you who is able to bring a new perspective to whatever your topic is, right? So there are lots of benefits we all can get if we do podcasts. As an author, you can grow new audiences, right? That That's a lot of what this is. If you're a nonfiction author and you have a particular message, you can grow that. You can get new readers for your work. And you can also elevate your writing and your brand just because more people will know who you are. And frankly, as uh, for those of you who were at last month's meeting when the editor and the agent were talking about how editors and agents and publishing companies love when people have a big social media presence. Well, one of the best ways to do that is to be on podcasts because, again, you get access to that host's audience. People will find you and follow you because a good host will always ask you for your social channels. They will ask you, how do people find you? If they want to know who you are, if they want to know more about the work you're doing, how do they find you? And you get a chance to get that information out there. And if they don't mention that they're going to do that, 
that's one of your opportunities to go and, hey, I'd really love to share my social channels or have a link to my book in your show notes. Things like that are things you're allowed to do. You're you're encouraged, actually, because that makes you a more considerate guest because you're giving the host more information up front so that they don't have to do all that research on their own. And believe me, as someone who interviews people every week, and I've just done over 400 episodes, it's really helpful when someone who's going to be a guest gives me that information ahead of time. And so the question can be asked, why are so few writers doing it? People shy away from being guests. There can be fear and anxiety. They're afraid to speak in public. They don't know how to pitch themselves to be a guest. And uh, there's the uncertainty part of it is kind of, it's a little weird because you don't think your story is worth sharing, which as a podcast host, I'm going to tell you, it is, it is, it is. You just have to pitch it a certain way. If you don't know what tech you need, honestly, you can be on your iPhone and do a great job being on uh, being on a podcast. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the tech in a little while, but honestly, you don't need that much. And because it's an unfamiliar paradigm, we tend to shy away. And, and the thing is, if you start thinking about it, it's a little bit like an interview radio show, or if any of you did radio station in high school, that's kind of what it is. It's it's kind of like a talk show, except for there are no rules. And the FCC so far has not stepped in to regulate podcasts. The FCC regulates radio like crazy. Podcasts, there is no regulation. The only thing that you are required to do is if you're going to have explicit content on your show, you have to mark it as explicit content. So no cussing unless you mark down that it's explicit. Otherwise, Anything goes, and there are myriad ways people are using podcasting. Like I was talking about Scott Siegler, for example. He read his entire book. Other people have done Serial is one of the big podcasts that went through and did a Serial show, and it was incredible and had lots of listeners. There are true crime podcasts. There are literary fiction podcasts. There are writing podcasts as in the craft of writing. There are podcasts about movies and music and science and nature, and you name it, there's a podcast about it nowadays, especially with 2.7 million active ones. So one of the things you can do if you're unfamiliar with it is pick a topic, any topic, go to uh, either Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and type in that topic. And I am willing to bet you there is a podcast about it, which means you can start listening and start becoming a little bit more familiar with how podcasts run. Because there really is no rule book about podcasts, it's a little tough to go, well, all podcasts are like this. They really aren't. Mostly, it's someone who has a message or, or a subject that they're passionate about. And then they go out and create a podcast and start either talking themselves or interviewing people, or they have a co-host. So there are lots of, again, different ways that you can actually make a podcast as well as being a guest on one. All right. So a little bit about me. I've released over 400 episodes of my own podcast, The Innovative Mindset, and that's me on the right there. I am an author. My current project is The Tarot Card Murders, and I used to have a public speaking phobia, not that you can tell now, but I also used to be a radio DJ. So I combined, in some ways, getting over the fear of public speaking and wrote a book all about that called Speak From Within with my DJing and my love of art and writing and music and created this this podcast where I interview peak performing creatives and people who are interested in changing the world through the environment, through animal rights. Uh, and I interview people and then I do my own show. Uh, how do I put this? Mondays, I interview Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I do solo episodes. So even that can be something that you modify as a podcast host, if you'd like to. But if you want to be if you wanted to be on my show, for example, because it's the innovative mindset, you'd want to pitch me something that's innovative, something that's wrote is not something that I personally would be interested in. However, if you were to pitch me and say, oh, I want to do this and it's not quite right for me, here's one of the things that I will tell you that despite 2.7 million podcasts, the podcasting world is really small. We all know each other. And if your podcast pitch is not right for me, it might be right for someone else and I will pass you along. So that's one of the things that is as, as you become more familiar with podcasts and start listening to them, start becoming more of a participant in them. People get to know you and they will help you. Podcasting world is super generous. They will help you get to where you want to go and find the act, find access to the people you want to have access to who might be hosting the kind of podcast you want to be on. Okay, so here's what you're going to know by the end of today. You're going to know how to research appropriate podcasts for you to be a guest on, 
how to pitch a podcast to be a guest, and podcast sort of guest etiquette and best practices. I just wanted you to know sort of the broad strokes of what we're going to be doing. And we talked a little bit about this. It helps you in myriad ways, but here are a few more concrete ways that being on a podcast will help you. You're going to get more readers. If you're selling something in addition to your book, you're going to get more customers. You're going to have a bigger following, which, as we said earlier, agents and editors love, and it builds your personal brand. And nowadays, like it or not, we all have to have some sort of a personal brand. If you look at, for example, my little podcast logo, I want to be mindset. So there's a little light bulb, that innovation, and I want to be creative. And so that's why you have that that little rainbow looking thing. When my designer designed this, it was all about the notion of innovation and creativity and also having that 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 sense of the way we think about creativity and innovation and not just, oh, uh, I'm going to throw something out there. I wanted it to be very specific. My, uh, my book covers are only done by one person because I have a very specific brand that I want my readers and my new readers to, to view me as. And that's something that when you start being a guest on podcasts that you also will get a chance to do is to build who you are online with your website, with your guesting on podcasts, with your books, with any interviews you do. It's all part of building that personal brand. All right, so we talked a little bit about this, but I want to make sure that we really delve into it a little. The ones, there are lots of podcasts out there, but the three that I think we would mostly be interested in as writers is fiction, nonfiction, and writing podcasts. So the fiction podcasts are usually about different genres and different stories. They're going to talk to you about the actual books or the writing that you're doing. Nonfiction is when the audience needs your expertise. So if you've written a nonfiction book or you're an expert in, in a topic, nonfiction podcasts, if you're writing a book or if you want, if you're doing something interesting in nonfiction, in a particular expertise, like what Marie was talking about, about facilitating these challenging conversations, there are nonfiction mental health podcasts out there that would love to have someone like Marie as a guest because it will give them access to an expert that they may, might not otherwise have. So when you're doing your research to be a guest on podcasts, you're going to have to decide, are you going to be primarily a nonfiction author for these or are you going to be a fiction author? And you pitch accordingly. You're never going to want to pitch a fiction podcast with your nonfiction work. It, it's just the way you funnel those bits of your expertise. And writing podcasts are basically how you get to teach from your experience the, the podcast's host's audience how to write and create. So those are the three that I would say you want to look at as far as when you would pitch to be a guest. Here are a few uh, fiction podcasts that are big, right? Penguin podcasts, you probably figure out that it's from the, the company itself. They have a fiction podcast. The Marist Review reviews new books, and they're looking at uh, best-selling authors, but they also want to look at new and upcoming authors. So you can do this research and find out. There's always some kind of a description there. Who are these people looking for? So when you're looking at these fiction podcasts, you're going to want to look at their descriptions to see what kind of guests are they looking for. And you get that by telling they will tell you what kind of guests they typically interview. If it's not an interview podcast, if you see that the person says, I talk about blah, 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 then don't even bother, right? You don't want to even bother looking at them as a potential podcast you want to pitch because they don't do interviews. So when you're looking at like sentimental garbage is a is a is a great one. It's justice for dumb women women sick of feeling guilty about the books you should be reading but aren't annoyed that the books you don't seem to like are the ones everyone else loves is, is the rest of that. So it's a very lighthearted podcast and it's really fun and it's about romance. So if you're going to be if you're a romance author, it, that might be a really good podcast for you to pitch. And then there are literature, like new books and literature, Lit Hub, lots and lots and lots of literature podcasts. So if you're writing more literature rather than genre fiction, tons of literature podcasts for you to look at. And we're going to talk a little bit more in a bit about how to find them. Nonfiction, you're going to see things like the Creative Nonfiction Podcast with Brandon O'Meara. Nonfiction is my lane. Nonfiction for life. Read to lead. These are all where nonfiction authors can discuss their expertise. And again, hundreds upon hundreds of them. 
There are some that are the tops of their fields. There are some like Tim Ferriss, the Tim Ferriss show. He he interviews authors, but he only interviews like, um, I can't, Salman Rushdie, right? He would interview best-selling authors because he's so popular that people like us who are not quite in the Salman Rushdie or Barbara Cortland or whoever uh, genre of people, we're not going to get on his podcast, right? And then there are some podcasts and steer clear of these folks I like John Lee Dumas because he's a he's a very passionate guy about entrepreneurship, for example. But if you want to be on his show, it's going to cost you thirty five hundred dollars. So I know at most the vast majority of podcasts will never charge you to be on their show. But he does. And he has millions upon millions of monthly followers and listeners. So he can. But I, I encourage you find the podcasts that aren't going to charge you because those folks are going to be very interested in finding who you are and getting you to their audience rather than um, get taking your money. I, I, I pay to play kind of stuff in podcasting makes me a little uncomfortable. Even though I had John Lee Dumas on my show and enjoy him as a person, personally, I would never charge someone to be on my show. That's just my thing. Okay. So, uh, and read to lead is another one. Like he says, consistent reading is what's going to help you succeed. He interviews people who have written nonfiction books that are going to be all about success, leadership, empowerment, uh, mental health, those kinds of topics. And they give you the opportunity, if that's the kind of author you are, to be on his show. Again, some of these are more popular than others. We want to be sure that we aren't pitching those that are a little bit yet right now out of our league. And we're going to talk about how you figure that out. Then there's the craft of writing. Become a writer today, creative writing life. Creative Pen, Joanna Penn's podcast is wonderful. If you if you want to get into podcasts, she's an incredible podcaster and writer. She's built a real career out of combining her nonfiction work, her fiction work, and her podcast into a solid, very big career for herself. And she's interviewed some of the biggest names because she does a great job. And she's all about helping creatives create. So I highly recommend her podcast. So you can see that there are these lots and lots of different kinds of podcasts that you can be looking at as an author. If you are a writer, and if you don't have anything right now to promote, but you want to talk about the craft of writing, these are perfect people to pitch. So how do you find the shows and which shows do you find? One of the first places that I recommend you go is Chartable.com. Chartable.com, actually, that's what they do. They chart podcasts. They look through all the podcasts out there. Most podcasts, the vast majority of podcasts are on Apple Podcasts because they were the sort of they were the leading edge in podcasting Apple. So they take all of the podcasts. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> they take all of the podcasts. And they chart who listens to them. They chart how many people listen to them. They chart the latest episodes. They chart all of the different reviews and uh, ratings that the show has gotten. And they put it to you all in one page. And why is that important? Because if you know that there's this wonderful writing podcast and they're perfect for your genre because you write speculative fiction about toys from the 1970s, for example, and that podcast is about speculative toys from the 1970s, but their last episode was in 2016, it's not helpful to you, right? So you only want to go for podcasts that have recent episodes. You don't want to look for podcasts that the last time they podcasted was three years ago because it's not helpful to you because probably they did what they call pod fade. Pod fade is one of these uh, phenomena that happened to podcasters, and that is you're gung-ho, you're ready to go, you're doing your podcast, yay! And then you run out of ideas and you run out of steam and you kind of fade away. And there are so many pod, millions more podcasts that have been begun and have faded than the 2.7 million that are active today. So when you're looking at Chartable, and we're gonna, I'm going to go through Chartable in a sec with you so you can see what it looks like, you're going to want to look at that. You're going to want to look at when was the last time they podcasted? What are their reviews like? Because if somebody's got a show that would be perfect for you to be a guest on, but their reviews are, this is a bunch of bunk you're not going to want to be on that show, right? So again, looking at that kind of thing, you have to become a little bit of a detective, but you're able to find that information so that you can get in, again, in this new and innovative way of being someone who's elevating their personal brand and also building their audience of readers and customers. You can go to Google. Certainly Google has all the podcasts listed. Also, Apple Podcasts is terrific for that also. Spotify has doubled down 
on podcasting in like incredible amounts because they went all in last year. They have their I think they're even thinking about doing reviews on on Spotify, but their every podcast is on Spotify. And that's another way that you can look at how many people they're looking at, how many people are listening to their shows, what the artwork is like, all of that information can inform what you're doing. And I would encourage you start a spreadsheet podcast name, when was their last episode, what is their rating, what kind of subject matter they have, and have you pitched them? Yes or no? Are you going to be on the show? Give yourself the opportunity to keep track of all that so that you can make sure, have I pitched them? I don't need to pitch them again. Or did I pitch them and they didn't get back to me? Oh, let me see if I can do a, a, a remail, right? I'll email them again and see whether or not they're interested, whether or not it went to the, into their spam folder all of that stuff. If you keep track of it, you'll know much better who you've contacted and whether or not you're going to be on their shows and when to prep and all of that. Oh, I do want to give you a side note. Often when you are on a show and you record it, you're not going to be on that week. You are going to be on perhaps even months later. For example, for me right now, people who are recording their interviews for my Monday interview show, they're not. their show doesn't air until January. So you need to be aware that if you're pitching something, when are they going to have you on? Because you're, if your book comes out in December in time for the holiday season, it's not going to be helpful to you if their podcast episode with you wouldn't air until March. So be aware of that. And the last one, and I love this one for sure, friends and colleagues, you probably know people who have podcasts. Tap them. Ask the people in your audience even, if you've got a, any kind of a mailing list, ask them, hey, do you have a podcast? Do you know someone who has a podcast? And if so... Is it about writing? Do you think I'd be a good fit? Let me know. And I've gotten on shows just asking my audience members, hey, do you know of a podcast I could be on talking about innovation and creativity? Yes, absolutely. Great. And then I pitch them. And that's how I got, I've got. i gotten on all sorts of really fun shows uh, and actually am about to be uh, in a national magazine with a story uh, very, very soon. And I got into an anthology. I just got into an anthology because of a podcast I was on. After she heard my story, the podcast host, who's also an author, went, oh, we're doing an anthology. Would you like to be in it? Sure. So I submitted. I got in and I'll let you all know when the, the, when it's out. I'm very excited about it. But the point is that it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been on her show and she hadn't liked my story. She would have never asked me. That's another way of tapping your resources and, and getting on shows. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, which is part one of And My Next Guest Is. That's the series, as I'm calling it. One of the things I wanted to tell you real quick is that I am including a PDF that shows you the visuals of what I'm talking about in the show notes. There's a link to the PDF in the show notes. You can just grab it and use it. I uh, the, the Chartable has they've changed their website a little bit and I have not gone back and gotten new screenshots but for the most part you're going to be able to use that uh, pdf in order to follow along and see what I'm talking about uh, visually if you will as part of going through and learning how to pitch yourself on podcasts come back in two weeks and you're going to be able to hear part two and then there will be part three four and five I believe all about how to pitch yourself onto podcasts so that podcast hosts are just dying to have you on their shows all righty uh, next week we're going to have another interview so that you know it's going to be kind of interspersed through the end of 2022 and then we'll see what happens to the show's format in the beginning of the next year I'm actually not sure it's going to keep going but it's going to change some it's going to evolve some I'm thinking I might have even more interviews but more interviews with creatives and I'm also going to spend some time in January probably deconstructing what my my artist year did for me and what it can do for you if you decide to embark on the same kind of really fun, really transformative program. I'm very excited to talk about that. That'll be all of January, probably. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about all, a lot of ways in which you can use creativity to supercharge your ingenuity and your ability to innovate, your ability to solve problems, your ability to collaborate, work together, listen. It, it transform Everything has transformed inside me by doing this project. And again, if you want to see 
some of the some of the art pieces that I've created, go to https colon slash slash isoldat.com slash artist hyphen year and you can see the evolution of me as an artist. As a friend of mine told me yesterday, my friend Megan said, you know, you can really see a confidence in you that just wasn't there a year ago. And it's true. There is a confidence in me as a person. There's a confidence in me as a creative. And another thing that she said is you've really found your style and your palette. In other words, the things that are that I'm naturally drawn to, they've become a lot more self-evident. And if you decide that you're going to do this too, and I'm going to go through how to embark on, on something like this uh, in January, frankly, if you decide to do it, you're going to see a transformation inside yourself too. It's been amazing. All righty. Until next time, as always, I remind you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.